Okay, so today is the last installment in our Wayne Tebow pop art ice cream, ice cream drawing. Sorry. Um, so far, <clears throat> we have practiced how to make an ellipse. We have practiced how to wrap a pattern around an object. We have practiced how to use value scale to shade, dark values push back, and light values pull forward. Practiced all of those things, yes? Okay. Then, in the second video, we drew the drawing. So, this is the, the contour line drawing of our Wayne Tebow art project that we've been working on, okay? And Wayne Tebow is a pop artist. Okay. Um, so, today I'm going to show you how to shade this, even though I think you probably know because we practiced it, right? So, we broke this apart into simple steps and now it's all together. And we did practice the value scale because we shaded the table already. And, you know, you've already done it. Now you're just going to do it all in one drawing. Make sense? But I'm going to show you how, okay? It's kind of like a cooking show. You know, here's the cake and here's the cake baked, <laughs> kind of, <laughs> since we're talking about Wayne Tebow. All right, so let me tilt this down. I have a drawing that's half finished. Um, make sure that you're using a medium hard pencil. So an HB pencil would be good, a B pencil would be good. Try not to use like a 6B pencil, even a 4B pencil. That's a little soft. And so when you're shading for value, that's not, that's not what I'm looking for. Like here's a 6B. <clears throat> when you're shading for value, it goes too dark too fast. It's soft, right? So it's easy to go way too dark too fast. And then you're going to miss out on your mid-tone. Your mid-tone is your number five, right? Ten is core shadow. It's the darkest. Five is the mid-tone, right? And zero is the highlight, okay? Usually, we do value scales like this, like, like a paint chip. But since we were drawing the table, I figured, why didn't we just turn it around, right? We could practice anyway. So just one more time. Ten is the core shadow, which is hard, hard, hard pressure. Five is half that pressure, which is mid-tone. And zero is hardly under pressure, any pressure at all, and that is a highlight. Okay? Okay. So let's tilt the camera down. And I'm not going to make this a super long drawing. Make sure that you can see what I'm working on here. Okay. Make sure you have an eraser and a really, really sharp pencil. Yeah? Okay. So here's the drawing that I'm kind of working on. So this is where... Actually, this is where we started, right? This is where you're at right now. Um, and then this is where I'm at. But since it's like a cooking show, I'm going to kind of show you. Um, and I wish I could do like time lapse, but I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I'm going to show you where to start, okay? So I think it's best to start when you start on your drawing on the table, okay? And you might have to kind of like, it's a little tricky because it's hard to shade like right up to it. So what I had to do was I kind of had to give myself a little edge like right there, okay? And then it's a little easier. So start with your 10. That means you're pressing pretty hard. And there's a lot of um, interruptions, right? Because these, these um, ice cream cones are overlapped. And you want this to kind of all be the same darkness, like here, right? So just take your time. It's not a big deal. And this this is going to be your homework for tomorrow. Even though I, I wanted you guys to bring these drawings in, I just wanted to check them and see them, okay? All right, so start on the table. Because you've already made the table, you kind of already know how to do it, right? And I have to get comfortable with my hand, so... Sorry, you know how it goes, right? And, like, really, if your hand's not comfortable, you're not going to be able to draw. It's just the way it is. Okay. And now, this is my mid-tone, which is a 5. This is my core shadow, which is heavy, heavy pressure. Mid-tone is a 5, which is half the amount of pressure, right? And there's my highlights. Super light, okay? <clears throat> now, to get the table to feel like it's a piece of wood, all you do is the angle would be a real sharp line and it would turn right so it would be a different value it would be darker so just shade that in with the edge of your pencil and see how I'm shading with my pencil kind of on its side like this super easy don't shade like this it's too difficult shade with the pencil on its side okay 
And make sure, like, I'm going to sharpen my pencil because it's kind of getting dull. Make sure you have a sharpener, okay? Even, like, one of these little hand sharpeners works really good. Actually, I kind of like the hand sharpeners better. They work better, I think. Okay. All right, so now we've got this one's done. This one's done. I'm going to show you how to do it, okay? It's super easy. You already know how to do the cone. Um, yeah, okay. So I'm just going to start. And where's my little chart at? Oh, here it is. Okay. So take a look at our chart. We did 10, 5, 0, 5, 10. That means dark on the edge, pushes back. This is a contour edge. This is the line I shade in this direction, right? And then dark on the edge, which is a 10. And then my midtone is half that. My midtone is half that. And then my highlight is in the center. Okay? And you don't even have to worry about pushing this up because we're going to shade the ice cream today. All right, so let's just do it together. Okay, so I'm going to start with my 10, like this. And if it goes onto the ice cream a little bit, that's all right. I can just erase it away. It's not a big deal. I might want to kind of hop down here and start this up so it feels like it's one thing, you know. So I see you guys tomorrow. Woohoo! Pretty exciting. All right, and then I'm gonna turn it just for a little bit because I I need to have my hands comfortable. And then see what I'm doing. Ten five zero five ten. Ten five zero five ten. Get it? That is my value scale. I'm doing my value scale with smooth, smooth transitions. I hope this kind of makes sense. We'll talk more about it. If this doesn't, don't get stressed out. It's not a big deal. You're just learning something new, right? So when you learn something new, it takes a while. But the minute you get nervous about learning something, then it's really hard to learn. I was never a very good test taker. Like in school, I got super nervous. And I wasn't able to do well on test. I think I knew the information, but I got so nervous that I couldn't do it properly, and then I kind of shut down. I don't want you to feel that way about art, okay? I want you to feel comfy, like a good pair of shoes or, or jammies or something like that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to just erase away where I kind of made a little boo-boo. No big deal. And also, I think what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to strengthen up these lines because since it would be going through... Um, there would be something called a weight line, W-E-I-G-H-T, weight. And that weight line represents tension. It shows, like, where two things are put together. For example, like, if you set a coffee cup on a table, there would be a dark line under the coffee cup because it shows, it indicates that it has mass or weight. So that's why we call it a weight line. And it's an instant way to make your stuff feel, like, three-dimensional. So I'm going to give this kind of a weight line so that it shows tension, like it's actually like holding the ice cream, right? Okay. And then I also think I'm going to put a little shadow underneath here because I want this table to come forward. I want it to pop forward, and I want the ice cream to be in the background more. I think I'm going to do that one to this one too. So watch what happens. This one kind of comes forward now. But watch when I um, push this back. It's going to feel like it's underneath. And if the sun was coming from on top, it would probably have like a cast. We call it a cast shadow. It would probably have a cast shadow underneath anyway. Right? I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Nobody has any cast shadows tomorrow. Not when it's rainy. Bring your umbrella because we're going to start the morning outside, I think. Unless we go to the cafeteria. Okay, so see the difference? It pushes it back, right? Okay. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to shade the ice cream, and it's super simple. It's exactly like shading this, the ice cream cone, except for, let me get my hand comfy. You use the contour lines, which is this. This is the contour line. This is a contour line. This is a contour line. You use the contour lines of the ice cream to show you the direction to shade. It's not a big deal. And look, it's just the same. Hard on the edge, like this. 
and then light to the center. No big whoop, right? So, and make just just make sure that you're not going up. And it's follow the contour edge, right? That's the way you got to do it because it's more natural and it looks it turns out better, I think. All right. And some of you guys, this is your first time shading. Don't get stressed out about it. It's no big deal. It's for fun anyway, right? As long as you're open to learning new things and new ways of trying things, it's going to be good. I like it when kids are open for learning because that means that we can try new things, right? Okay. And I kind of shade the edge here because I want, remember, dark values push back and light values come forward. And I want this to feel like it's kind of going back in space, so I just kind of shade the edge up a little bit. Okay. And so then I do the same thing over here. I start dark on the edge and look at the direction that I'm shading, you know. I think you can learn a lot just by watching. Sometimes I think I talk too much. I think as a teacher I talk way too much. I should just show you how to do it. Right? They say like a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, a video must be worth 2,000 words because you can actually watch me do it, right? See how I'm shading a little darker on the edge here because I want it to feel like it's turned in space, right? All right. So I'm just shading, shading, shading. It's not a big deal. It's super kind of easy, and it's really kind of fun. It's like those coloring books for adults. I love those things. Have you guys tried those? They're super fun. And you know what? You can shade like that in your coloring book using coloring pencils. If you shade, if you have one of those adult coloring books, you can shade hard on the edge and light to the center and you will have like a op art piece of artwork finished if you if you try it that way. You know what I'm saying? Cool. Okay. I'll do one or two more and then I'll show you how to do the cherry, okay? And I just did the same thing for the spoon and for the straw. I just shaded them exactly like I'm shading this. It's really so like it's like anything. Once you get it, you get it. Hard on the edge with my value scale, following the contour edge or contour line, same thing. And I'm starting dark. And again, I want the edges to kind of be a little darker because dark values push back, right? Oh, now I got the hiccups. Great. <laughs> Okay, I might have to stop this video because I can't have hiccups in a video. That's not going to work. Okay, and if you want it to feel more like, excuse me, vanilla ice cream, you'll just leave, you'll just leave this a little bit more highlighted. Not a big deal, right? Um, I was going to show you how I did this effect, but I think that might be too, maybe I'll, maybe I'll show you just one little one. Okay. Let me finish this. I gotta hold my breath. And just watch me draw for a second while I hold my breath. How long was that? Could I be a swimmer? <laughs> I love to swim and I can hold my breath pretty, pretty long. But holding my breath has only always been the only way for me to get rid of hiccups. It's, it's kind of crazy. And mine not, is not perfect, so don't try to make it perfect. Just I want you to get the idea. It's more important that you get the concept than make it perfect, right? Because it should be fun, number one. And number two, I want you to learn something. And number three, maybe it turns out, maybe it doesn't. If it doesn't, oh, well, no big whoop. We're just learning, right? Okay. So the same idea for the cherry. Cherries um, have a really bright highlight. So what I do is I go through and I kind of gently make like a circle because I want this, like, and right here too, I want it to be really shiny. And when something is really shiny, like an eyeball, you know what I mean? Eyeballs are shiny because they're wet, right? And cherries are shiny because uh, it's a fruit. It's a slick surface, right? If you want it to be shiny, you really got to leave a bright, deliberate 
highlight. Ding! You know, like a highlight is like the brightest part of a drawing, like in your eyeball. And you can kind of do it like with an eraser. You can go back in and erase away. But make sure you have that really bright, 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 bright area. So that it looks like the right texture. Because basically, all um, a drawing is, is lights and shadows, right? And so you can kind of tell the texture of something by how you apply the value. We're going to talk more about that later. Okay, I'm going to show you one last thing. If you want to do it, you can try it. If you don't want to, you don't have to. So I wanted this to feel a little bit more creamy. So what I did, or I just wanted it to have a little bit more movement. I don't know what I was really going for. I just liked it. I kind of put stripes on it, but I did it on an angle. Remember how we angled this on the cone? So what I did was, I need a sharper pencil. Sorry. Yeah, and for this, you do need a super, super, duper sharp pencil. If you don't have a sharp pencil when you do this for your texture, it's not going to work out as well. So I just kind of wrapped these lines around it. And uh, you know how sometimes ice cream has stripes in it? If it's got like, I don't know, caramel or something in it. But I'm doing it on an angle. I'm not doing it straight. If I did it straight up and down, it would flatten it out, right? So do it on an angle. And I'm kind of doing it darker in the corners, like here and here, and then lighter in the center. OK? So just play around with it. You don't have to do this. But I like for you guys to get used to like learning different techniques for shading. It's fun. And don't stress about it. It's no big whoop. It's just a drawing. Right? And so far, I've seen some fabulous drawings from you, friends. Like, holy cow. Like, high school level drawings. I'm not kidding. Very proud of you guys. Okay. And then, if, what you can do, if you want to get super fancy, is you can get yourself an eraser and you can kind of erase back over top of it. This is called subtractive drawing. What we do normally is additive drawing. We add something to the surface of the paper. When you use an eraser, you subtract. You take away, right? And, you know, an eraser can be just as much of a drawing tool as a pencil. Sometimes more fun. Maybe I'll even pull the highlight out here. Maybe I'll even pull a highlight out here. See what I'm saying? An eraser is for your highlights. Okay. I think that's not so bad. Um, okay. I'm going to turn the camera up and say goodbye. Okay. There you go. So, that concludes our three-part episode <laughs> of our Wayne Tebow pop art. He's a pop artist. Popular culture, right? So I hope you learned a little bit of something about value scale. Number one, where's my value scale? About value scale. I hope you learned something about how to draw circles that are tilted in nature, so like an ellipse, right? Because we don't look at everything straight on. We look at things from an angle. And so you have to get good at drawing ellipses, OK? And also, we learned about shading with our value scale. Dark values push back, and light values push forward, right? And we also learned about wrap, like wrapping a pattern around an object. Like, for example, these stripes on this coffee cup, they're not straight. They're bent, right? So this angle follows this angle, right? This is the contour edge or the contour line, and the stripes would follow it. Same with shading. You follow the contour edge for shading. And then, you know, we shaded our, our ice cream, just following the contour edge, OK? <sighs> OK. So I will see you guys tomorrow. And this is your homework for when you leave class, OK? So if you're a Thursday kid, if you're an, a group A kid, 
this is going to be due uh, next week. And if you're a Group B kid, a Friday kid, so it's playing well as Group A, Group B is a Trojan group, so Group B kids that I see Friday, this is also due next week when I see you, okay? And I want you to physically bring it into class. <sighs> okay. Good job on this, you guys. And good job on your op art, your Bridget Riley drawing. It's fabulous. I loved it. Very good. Okay. I will see you so, so soon. <laughs>